Welcome to Gdansk on the Baltic coast in Poland for Balt Military Expo 2016, where the local and international industry is showcasing their latest naval defense technologies. We are here for uh, the, the naval project, uh, for the corvettes, the coastal defense ship, and for the patrol vessels, uh, two times uh, three ship program. And uh, in the, uh, behind me you see what we have proposed to the uh, Polish authorities. And actually those are uh, uh, two ships which are almost identical when it comes to uh, the platform. So propulsion is the same, the, the, the measurements are, are the same and only the, the, the combat system is, is different to meet the requirements of the, of the Polish Navy. This is one out of a family, the so-called Sigma family, and we try to standardize as much as possible, in the platform at least. This size we are currently building two frigates in Indonesia. Well, what you see here is the, the so-called uh, multi, multi-mission bay. This is the, the, the area just below the uh, helicopter deck. And what we actually are trying to do here is create space uh, to, to have some flexibility uh, for the Navy to insert their certain uh, capabilities. And that could be uh, small interceptors, but also uh, you can insert containers. 20 foot containers, two of them, or 20, uh, two 20 foot containers and two 10 foot containers, and whatever fits in a container, you can carry on the ship. So it could be a towed array, it could be an MCM device or other uh, re remote controlled devices. And that is the flexibility you will get here, so then you can adapt to the missions and tasks you are going to execute. For the first time at Balt Military Expo is a visiting submarine, the Soderman land of the Swedish Navy. Let's hear from the ship's captain. I'm, uh, Lieutenant Commander Frederick Falbert, uh, CEO of the HMS uh, Södermalen. The submarine itself it was launched the first time in uh, 1987 uh, as a part of the Västergötland class. Uh, we modernize it and, and put in the 10 meter section with the uh, Stirling engine in uh, so it was recommissioned in uh, 2004. Um, as a conventional submarine you always have to snort every second or third day since the battery capacity is um, not you're not able to, to uh, run without air but with the Stirling engine we are now able to operate up to 30 days almost without snorkeling so it's, it's a great advance for us yeah. day 26 i am sure that it will be a great improvement of course but it will be um, an improvement of the capabilities all capabilities um, uh, the new features we will not have any periscope uh, there will be uh, more ocean-going submarine, a little bit bigger than this one, um, so uh, well, I'm looking forward to see it actually. Day 26 is the current submarine that has just recently been ordered by the Swedish uh, government and it is now in production in Sweden. It is a um, evolution from the Gotland class that we had before, um, but on this, um, on the A26, we feel that we have taken considerable steps 
um, further enhancing um, the submarine use for particularly the Baltic uh, region. But as uh, some other that have asked me about the Baltic region, if it is actually developed to the Baltic region, can you use it elsewhere? And the answer is, if it's developed for the Baltic region, you can use it anywhere. So this A26 um, symbolizes a lot of history from the success stories we have from previous designs and a couple of new features as well. Um, particularly in the front, you can see we have a flexible uh, payload tube and it's unique in the world. So we can actually use our, we can deploy our special forces away from the control room, away from other sensitive areas of the submarine. Normally you have a deployment in the middle of the submarine or below the, the, the fin, but this will allow us to have deployment in a specific area. We can also deploy um, unplanned vehicles as the, 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 the tube is so large that we can actually carry in and retrieve um, many different unknown parts into the submarine. Um, also, the, the continuous pride of, of our design is the AIP system. We have an AIP system that we have been operational since 1988, and I'm not saying on a laboratory. 1988, it was in use by the Swedish Navy. Now all Swedish submarines are now equipped with this AIP system. And the key feature of this one, it is extremely well proven, extremely easy to replenish. We can fill with liquid oxygen and normal diesel at sea. We don't even have to be in shore within six hours and you can be off again. My name is uh, Stéphane Meunier. I'm uh, in charge of uh, business uh, submarine development for DCNS. I'm a former submariner. I, I was a commanding officer of uh, the French nuclear submarine squadron in Toulon. We have one major product, which is uh, the Scorpion class submarine. Uh, the Scorpion class submarine is a submarine designed for uh, combat operations and long range duration deployment. Um, she is uh, uh, well designed for uh, blue waters operation as well as uh, shallow waters operations such, in the, such as in the um, uh, Baltic Sea. Uh, she is a well armed uh, submarine with an excellent combat system. Uh, for example, she is able to launch uh, uh, torpedoes, uh, F 21 torpedoes, uh, Exocet missiles, sub launch missiles, and uh, naval cruise missiles. Uh, which can uh, um, strike uh, deeply in adversary in an adversary territory. So my name is Paul Gresina, I'm working for Tusken Group Marine Systems and I'm the project manager for Orca. So what we can see here on the left hand side, that's the 212 Alpha class. It's part of our proposal for Poland. In fact, actually, we are offering to Poland two types of submarines, both are proven, the 214 as well as the 212 Alpha. The 212 Alpha is in fact in service with the German Navy as well as the Italian Navy. And I think it's actually a very unique submarine that's, I think, looking at the Polish requirements, very suitable for Poland. So what are those requirements or what are its main features and its capabilities? Well, if we look at the 212 Alpha, I think one, one thing that makes the submarine very special is, in fact, signature management. The submarine itself is, in fact, worldwide the only submarine being built out of non-magnetic steel. So then I think, furthermore, if we talk about the propulsion system, this submarine can be really considered a proven AIP submarine. We have our AIP systems on more than 30 submarines all over the world. Furthermore, and I think that's also something quite special about 212, but also 214, is our capability of missile integration. We have with the IDAS systems, one system that we've developed on our own. It's an anti-air self-defense missile, but we've also got um, different missile systems, anti-ship missiles, also integrated mainly on over 50 submarines of the 209 and 214 class. 
and I think with this kind of set of capabilities we are I think quite quite suited to become a very very good partner for Poland.